Before I show you how I made a fixture plate for my evolution saw, let me just tell you something that happened. The reason, the incident that made me think I should do this. So I was making this float lock vise. I had to make diagonal cuts on large pieces of stock. It wasn't easy to do with the stock setup on the evolution saw. I ended up setting up some fixturing to do it. For the large pieces, it turned out okay. You can see the complicated arrangement of impromptu clamps and bolts and so forth. There's nothing to screw into, so you have to use the slot that the clamp uses. Then I had to cut a smaller piece, but the setup was more complicated. And here you can see that I've got it set up, but one of the problems is that nothing is flat and I need to get very close to the blade. Put the slot under the blade is very wide. So I had to, I thought that this fixturing would be adequate, even though it started out okay. Eventually something happened and knocked everything over. It tore out a bunch of teeth. Luckily I wasn't hurt, but I knew better than to ever do that again. So this is the new setup I came up with. This took me probably 20 or 30 minutes of walking back and forth because all my stuff isn't in one shop. I have two very small areas. This was successful, but it took forever to set up. Let me show you the fixturing plate that I made for my evolution saw. It saves me time in setup since then, and hopefully it'll be useful to you too. Okay, so here it is. It's uh, 27 inches long, 28 inches long, uh, three quarters thick, 10 inches wide. So this is where the fence is. This is where the saw cuts. I'm gonna, I put dowel pins every other, all the way down and three eighths threaded between them. And then where the fence goes, there's three dowel pins, reamers are still coming. And then down at the bottom where there's a clamp, I put a bunch of dowel pins there too. And then I did a bunch of um, quarter, 20, quarter 20 holes here. I figured for small parts that don't need as much lock-on pressure, I'm gonna be kind of in this area. Okay, I'm just gonna snug this down, see how we're doing for squareness. Yeah, see that's, it's rotated like this, which I think is just because of the shape of the collar. You can see how that's probably tweaking this all this way. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to fire up the lathe and uh, make a custom washer that actually bears all the way around. Okay, so this is what we got. Just goes all the way through. So next I'm gonna cut off this side, basically so it'll, it'll butt up against there without making an offset. Do you see that bottom corner? It interacts with the radius right here. Okay. 
Yeah, with the bolt loose and pressing as hard as I can going this way, there's still a perceptible difference. Well, one thing I could do is drill out the hole in this one, just a tiny bit bigger. Okay, I think that's close enough for what we're doing. It's not perfect, but I imagine this thing will mostly be used for situations where I'm rough cutting stock to length. Okay, so I got the clamp, I got the clamp off. Um, normally it rides like this in a groove. I didn't realize there's actually a hold down at the bottom. So that hold down runs in this plate. And the plate is normally attached here. But I don't see how I can incorporate this. So to get this thing totally level, really we, had, we need three points of, uh, to support it. And the greater loads are going to be on the side. So I'm going to do two points here and then one point here. And those three points will allow me to level this so that it's exactly 90 degrees to the blade. Um, the other thing is basically nothing is reference. Like the only thing that is set probably mostly is the blade. So what I'm going to do, oh, and the fence, right? So the fence is fixed relative to this edge, sort of, but this edge isn't totally straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. So the blade is almost touching this edge, and it's perpendicular to this, and it's perpendicular to this. We've got the, these are 3 sixteenths, or sorry, 3 8 16. Um, <clears throat> they're the same thread as through the plate, right? So and I've cut them so that I can have them come up through the plate, have a nut on either side, and then stick up far enough that I can thread it into a hole in the plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install one one pin here and then I have a pivot point and then what I'm going to do is square up the blade to the fence and then um, after and then mark the other two holes and then eventually I can level the whole thing. Alright so I'm going to put you guys into time-lapse mode. Uh, Thank you. 
Okay, so I started here a pivot point, and then I got these two set in one at a time. Because there's a recess here, in order to level the thing out, I had to adjust this one, and I'm starting here with a course adjustment. And now I've got to like use the machine square to level up this way compared to the blade. Alright guys, this is the finished product. Yeah, I think we gotta do some, some test cuts and see how it works. So I've got a set of 3 8 clamps that are coming, but the problem is they haven't showed up yet. I've got some impromptu um, clamping stuff that I've used in the past. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a couple pieces here. Um, I'm actually working on another project which is making a float lock vise and just like tubal cane. So let me get some stock for that. We can start making cuts and uh, get an idea of how, how it works.
When I first set this up, I did this exact same project, same bar, same alloy, same cuts. Last time, it took me like to cut us to set up this cut. It took me probably 30 minutes. Yeah, last time I did this, it took forever. This time, it just took. Well, here I'll look back how many minutes it was, but yeah, basically this um, setup is is doing exactly what I'd hoped. It's making setups easier and safer. So I like that. So this will be the bottom part of a clamp for a float lock vise. The height of it is real important because um, well, you'll just have to watch that video. Okay, so I think that's enough for this project. Uh, We'll hopefully be doing other stuff on this channel, um, cool stuff like this, so uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.